Now, I don't know about you, but the adventure sector has gone absolutely nuts in the past few years. This year, we've got the new Multistrada V4 from Ducati, and this is the 2021 KTM 1290 Super Adventure S. The KTM reckons this is 90% new, and you look at it and you think, well, it looks different, but 90%? When you look at it properly, when you delve into it deeper, it is absolutely rammed with technology. KTM reckons this is the most technologically advanced adventure bike, and when you, again, when you delve deeper into it, you can see why. There's so many buttons to play with. The heart of it is a six axis IMU. We've got adaptive cruise control, uh, which you can turn off to make normal cruise control. Uh, we've got hill start control, trash control, all the controls, everything control. And in terms of the chassis, there's big news here as well, massive news. So 50 millimeters have been chopped off the front of the frame. So the headstock has been moved further back towards the rider. And although the swing arm is longer for stability, that whole, that whole front section is shorter. The frame actually is shorter itself. Now perhaps the engine is the area where the bikes had least amount of work, but there's loads of work gone into it. It's now 1.6 kilos lighter, it's obviously Euro 5 compliant, uh, and there's new pistons. Power is still 160 horsepower, uh, and torque is still 138 newton meters of torque, so there's plenty in the tank, sir. And one area that they've also improved is the cooling. Sounds a bit boring, but these bikes were renowned for your legs getting a bit warm. Um, some of the heat from the engine caused a bit of uh, discomfort for the owners, in case you haven't listened to that, so, and there's now uh, two radiators, one for each cylinder. And in terms of aesthetics, we've got these kind of Dakar inspired aesthetics with the bladder tanks either side and the seat and the rear of the tank is much thinner. So it's, it feels like a much smaller bike. Apparently there are 11 options of seat in the power parts catalog. So if you can't get this to fit yourself, then there's either something wrong with you or the power parts collection. But anyway, sun's out. Uh, we've got a full day of riding ahead. So um, let's get on. I'm not going to lie, we spent the morning dicking about for photography and I've already had the chance to ride it and wow, this is good. This is really bloody good. We've got two adventure bikes leading the way for 2021 so far. As you can see, the dash is a main event when you get on the bike. Seven inch TFT, as I said. Um, it's got more toys than a Toys R Us door. It is brimming with stuff and it is actually all really useful and really and really relevant to to the ride and the first thing you'll notice is just how agile this thing is this the geometry settings over 15 mil is a big difference in terms of geometry i know a lot of people go oh, 15 mil oh. but 15 mil in geometry terms is massive and obviously i know the swing arm is longer but this shorter frame there's no other way to describe it it's a supermoto adventure bike and the other thing you'll notice straight away is just how smooth the engine is. I know that the engine was kind of left to the last bit of the press presentation. Uh, but so much work has gone to Euro 5. Not only that, but it's so much smoother at the bottom end. I know KTMs are renowned for being lumpy at the bottom. Uh, and this is nothing like lumpy. I think all that work has been done by electronics uh, and fuel injection because it's uh, buttery smooth. But you know, obviously we're not here to compare it directly to the Multistrada without a proper good back-to-back -back test, but oh, I'm going to be bold and say this is better. I prefer this already. I want to take this to a track day because this is going to be serious fun with panniers on and all. Hello! I'm just going around the outside of you on your GSX R1000. And obviously you've got the new switch gear, which is, I mean, it's quite busy, isn't it? Um, Funnily enough, you don't get confused with indicators. The indicators are quite easy to get to. There's lots of buttons, but it's all really intuitive and I didn't need a lesson in it to uh, uh, to pick it up straight away. So, oh. and I did the blind tire test. I didn't look at what tires were on it. I didn't uh, ask the question, uh, but these are Mitus. I can't remember what they're called, but they're fairly decent. And now we were corner cornering earlier. Uh, <laughs> I was taking some liberties and they just gave confidence. I mean, obviously the, the mechanical grip from this bike, uh, regardless of what setting you have the suspension in, is deeply impressive. But yeah, I mean, in terms of adjustability, it is, I can't remember a bike 
well I don't think there is a bike with this much electronic adjustability uh, and it's all at the fingertips so we go down um, obviously your usual electronic aids suspension modes uh, the preload adjuster is really impressive uh, so you can and you can all adjust it this is a good thing it's all gonna be done on the fly and you've got anti-dive as well so originally that was for this has been designed for people with pillions people with wives on the back uh, to stop them when you touch the brakes to stop their head button you uh, but I've been using it this morning and I found it really effective when you're trying to ride harder you don't get that you still get weight transfer but it's not as gnarly as uh, without the anti-dive on so with the preload adjuster just click through and it tells you it gives you a live sort of uh, idea of where the preload is but let's go for 80 if you've got a really fat person on the back you can crank it up to maximum you know the seat and the tank is much narrower they give you a better sense of control you've kind of boss it now and like i said with those chassis changes it, I, there's no way, better way to, it's like a bmx with an engine in it's a super moto with steroids there's a lovely sense of control like i said it just uh just fills you full of confidence straight away uh, the screen is also much easier to adjust just with one hand left or right you can just go up and down and the old bike wasn't exactly cumbersome but you know you certainly knew it was an adventure bike and this is this is such a big difference slow speed maneuverability just pushing the bike round that the way it sits on its springs the way it kind of is poised ready for a, your next input there isn't another bike like it and now obviously this heat wave we're having in the UK right now clog of time really it's 21 degrees obviously not not scorching but warm enough and I didn't I wasn't one of those people that moaned about the heat uh, coming from the engine when I was riding but I will say the difference is tangible it really is I'm wearing jeans and I can't feel anything from the engine obviously I know there's a fair amount of work gone in with the different fairings and plastics and the separate radiators for each cylinder and blah de blah de blah but that is uh it's a it's a ta it's a palpable difference that's for sure and as i mentioned uh we've got adaptive cruise control but the key thing here with the ducati with the uh, ktm sorry is that you can turn it into normal cruise control which is absolutely super kids the only thing i will say is uh, i've been on the bike uh for about half an hour now and my body's in a bit of bother which yeah it's probably not a massive surprise for some of you it does look very thin at the back doesn't it? it does look very neat and tidy i just pulled away in third then but totally by accident but it's a nice little test out because there's no way you could have done that with the old bike if you haven't ridden the 1290 super adventure s before um obviously the motor was derived from the Super Duke, uh, very different state of tune, more mid-range, smooth the bottom end, etc. But it's power everywhere, um, and that's why KTM reckon this is the best engine for an adventure bike. And you can kind of see why. Obviously, Ducati put the V4 in, but there is power everywhere, and especially with this update for 2021, there is. I mean, it's just uh, KTM and refinement are really two words using the same sentence. But this is another step in refinement for KTM and it does you know for this kind of bike it uh, it does really suit it it's bizarre though it's a, the overused expression of a, a water boatman uh, on magic mushrooms but that's what it feels like uh, I wouldn't know what that feels like but that's what it feels like and it really does put it in its weight I mean it doesn't feel like a big, big adventure bike I love the kind of Dakar looks it's got at first I wasn't too sure of the uh, kind of it looks a bit more orthopedic than the old bike but now I kind of like the Dakar heritage looks you know those kind of big sweeping tanks on the side and the bladder tanks as they're called let's go sport suspension mode uh, leave it on that put anti-dive on yes I think now we've got the ultimate sporty setup Oh, that anti-dive function is sweet as a nut. Now, I'm going to stick my neck out here and say that the uh, KTM is definitely more fun than the Multistrada.
I like all KTMs, it's not like they're dull when they're being ridden at low speeds or you know quarter throttle but they just urge you it's just that intrinsic thing in the motor they just urge you to to do naughty things you know even an adventure bike aside from looking at it riding now I honestly couldn't tell if I was on an adventure bike or uh, some sort of naked tourer cruiser sport thing I honestly have no idea you know it's almost like the ultimate daily thompson isn't it the ultimate all-in-one swiss army knife do it all oh yes here we go here we go i'll tell you what uh you can keep your uh body shot of v4 what a bike it's almost a shame to call it an adventure bike but i love the way you can do everything on the fly no more faffing around. Yes, you've got to close the throttle to change uh, to turn off uh, traction control and etc. But everything else can be done on the fly, and that is a massive uh, break forward. I know most things you can do now, but this is everything. The whole lot you can do while you're riding. Praise the Lord! I can't. I'm not going to sit here and say that the shifter uh, and the shift action is better. The, obviously, the gearbox is being heavily revised. I'm not going to say that I can feel any different. Um, it's a bit more positive, that's for sure. Slightly more positive, but the rest of it, I couldn't tell you uh, if I was on the old bike or the new bike. And today's adventure, ladies and gentlemen, is... I can't remember exactly what it's called. We're going to the highest point in the southeast of England, which is a heady 238 metres above sea level. Um, and I can't remember what it's called. Whoa! <laughs> But let's pretend you haven't ridden the 1290 before. Let's start from the base. Let's start from the very bottom. Uh, I mean, yes, it's a V-twin. Uh, and yes, it's a little... You, know, you, you get a bit of chain clatter now and again if you're in too high gear. But like I said, it's super smooth now. There's power everywhere. The throttle connection is sweet. I remember the days when you used to ride a KTM and the throttle would be awful. Uh, you know, not quite MV awful, but the level of refinement now as I said, it's creeping down, creeping into all the bikes. Um, but yeah, it's uh, there's, there's power everywhere. Every single bit of the middle. You've got 160 horsepower. Um, you know, it, it, it's more than enough for an adventure bike. But it's that mid-range that gets you excited. And the mid-range kind of urges you on to do very naughty things indeed. There's been times today when I've gone for the overtake. And... The bars have got a little bit, little bit light, but it's nothing like you're rowing for Oxford. I wouldn't say it's as sure-footed as the Multistrada. Um, but equally, in the corners and in terms of change of direction and flickability, uh, this is a big step over the... Uh, oh, get out of the way! No, 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 no. You would never get bored of riding this bike, that's for sure. Uh, and other adventure bikes, obviously, particularly the GS. Oh, uh, off to you then, mate. Normally, big adventure bikes, they'll be, you know, not cumbersome, but they'll be a little bit hesitant at the sort of short back road stuff like this. And, you know, you want a, something a bit more nimble and a bit more, a bit lighter, perhaps. Like I said, this is, this laughs at the face of anything you throw at it. Inglewood! Oh, here we go, sports fans. True adventure bike riding. Here we go. And look, I know, but well, I'm certainly a doubter that anyone who spends 15, 20 grand on a brand new big adventure bike takes them off road. Um, some people insist they do. But the vast majority don't but what i will say is look how, how much thinner this seat is and the tank standing up now doesn't feel like you're on a you're sort of making love to a whale wow wow them views a nice little touch here you can remove the seat by just pressing a little button here and Like that. Just unclip from the rear. You get your toolkit. 
Uh, you can also adjust the seat as well, so obviously that's on the lower setting at the moment, which is fine for me to be honest with you, but you can go another 10 mil, 50 mil higher, just by unclipping it and putting it on there. I'm not going to attempt to do it though, just so he's getting the key out and faffing around with more keyless ignition guffery. So this place is called Wayfarer's Way, and yeah, the highest place in the southeast. Bloody hell! Moto Marini! The buy on the website motorcycle. Oh, two Moto Marinis. Aside from the seat, <clears throat> um, I think the only thing I can think of negative wise is its fuel consumption. Uh, because we are. We haven't done that many miles today and. Uh, We've got 70 miles left. I mean, that's way less than that. I reckon that'll be about 30 or 40 by the time we've caned it. But you don't need the key to open the flap, uh, which is always good. Well, today has been a, a mere a moose bouche for the main event, which is the showdown with the Marty Strada V4. As I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not sure what's happened to the adventure segment, but it's gone bananas. I think as motorcyclists get older, everything gets older with it, and these do it all adventure bikes are a prime example of that the technology and the focus that's going into these bikes and the money that's going into these bikes for development is unreal and I certainly wouldn't have predicted it a few years ago I'm not really sure if I can chuck any more superlatives in this thing it's uh it just delivers and delivers and delivers and you know, for, for riders like myself who enjoy riding spiritedly, the harder you ride it, the better it is. And you don't get that with many other bikes or indeed manufacturers. So I think there are comfier adventure bikes. There are more refined, more sensible adventure bikes. But if you're looking for something uh, a bit more unhinged, um, a bit loose, but yet strangely refined for a KTM, there's no other choice. But like I said, it's difficult to get a feel sometimes when you're comparing another bike if it's not here, that you're not doing a direct back to back, but there's no messing about here. This is, I mean, they call the uh, 790, 890 the scalpel, don't they? Um, this is razor sharp and it's a shitload less money than Ducati and the BMW. Uh, the biggest thing is, Again, for me, completely subjectively, it's fun. Motorcycling, riding a bike should be fun. And doing that on this is strangely addictive. It's not strangely addictive, it's just highly addictive. You know, lots of bikes, we have all this technology and it would sanitize it and become stale and a bit, I don't know, basically all the things we don't like about new modern bikes, but this has got all the toys and more, and it's still able to uh, deliver a smile. Danke schön! Bitte sein! Arrivederci!